So I said to Myrna, what, was, what did that give you to call those bars? And she said, freedom. I knew that someday I would be free. And if I couldn't go there, I wanted to hear that someone was there. And I said, you never said anything? And she said, only one time in 14 years did she ever say anything. Towards the end of that time, she asked the, one of the bartenders who picked up the phone, <laughs> I've told this story so many times, and it's like this part, different parts of her story, because what she said to them is, do you have an age limit? Because she thought, like, her whole ability to be gay had, like, passed her by. I started this in 1992. Well, 1991, we started an anti-Hollywood homophobia campaign. We used the celluloid closet, the book by Vito Russo, many of you know, as our Bible. And there were issues with various movies that year, Fried Green Tomatoes. They took the lesbian content out of that book and made the movie. I had joined Gay Liberation Arizona Desert. And uh, our first act was to bring Dallin Phyllis. They had just published Lesbian Woman. So I got this school, Arizona State, where my father was chairman of the psychology department. <laughs> yeah, he was not happy. Um, so we got this theater reserved, and I uh, reserved the parking area, and um, I didn't really think anybody was going to show up, and I got down there about an hour before, and the parking lot was filled with cars, and I said to the parking attendant, hey, I reserved this space here, and he said, yeah, they're with you. And I went in, and there were like 500 women there. They'd driven, there were these dusty pickup trucks in the parking lot with Colorado license plates and California license plates and New Mexico license plates. Women from all over the Southwest had driven hundreds of miles, much as I did last night to be with you today, <laughs> uh, to see Dell and Phyllis. And Dell and Phyllis are up on stage, and I'm looking at them. I'm, I think, 17 or 18 at the time. And, and um, you know, Phyllis, to this day, looks a lot like my mom. <laughs> really, she does. And she kind of speaks like my mom. So she's up there talking about how they're fire-breathing lesbian feminists and they're going to burn down the patriarchy and, and just how threatening they were to the establishment and the rest of it. And I was such a snotty little punk kid. And during the question and answer period, I said to, I said, uh, I was like the only guy in the audience too. <laughs> I said, well, excuse me, Ms. Lyon, you know, but I just think it's funny because you talk about how dangerous you are, but you really look like, just like my mom. And she said, well, fuck you, kid. I ain't your mother. <laughs> oh, God. And we are still friends to this day. I told you that in 1956, I discovered this gay girls bar, uh, The Open Door. Um, I stopped going there in 1957 when I found a gay girls bar that I liked even better. And that too was uh, here in Los Angeles. It was on Ventura Boulevard. And there was an incredible uh, woman singer there by the name of Beverly Shaw, who dressed like Marlena Dietrich and had a voice and a style like Dietrich's. And I, I confess that all of us young lesbians uh, had a huge crush on, on Beverly Shaw. Anyway, I, I hadn't heard her voice in um, uh, nearly 40 years, but doing research at the Mazer about a dozen years ago, I found a vinyl record album with a big picture of Beverly Shaw on the cover, just as I remembered her and her record inside singing all of my favorites from the 1950s. Now, I can't imagine that there are many copies left of that album anywhere else in the world, but there it was at the Mazer Collection. Oh, I shouted from the highest hill Even told the golden daffodil at last my heart an open door and my secret love no secret and 